To me, last night's performance uh, from the audience standpoint was the worst because it was the most hysterical crowd I've seen since you started your tour, San Francisco, Las Vegas included. Do you agree with that point of view? Um, not really. I didn't think at the time of our show it was the most hysterical. But I thought after the show, more things happened than at the other places. Like we couldn't get out for a start. Everything seemed to go wrong. But apart from that, I didn't think it was the most hysterical crowd because <clears throat> I think uh, mainly they had the house lights up on the in the uh, the theatre in the Colosseum, whatever it was, yeah. and uh, you lose a bit of atmosphere when all the house lights are on. And I prefer it when it's a bit darker. Yeah. And it isn't basically bad for to have a historic a hysterical audience, uh, is it? Uh, it's uh, rather usually s somewhat better because it uh, possibly incites you to do a little better job and it shows yeah. that you have an appreciative audience. Yeah, oh. exactly. Yeah. That's the way we feel. The, the better the, the crowd responds to us, then the better we are, I think. It usually goes that way. We you and the... Uh, the uh, remember there was one point where somebody jumped onto the stage. What about that type of thing? Well, it's good, you know, because um, I don't think that we'd ever get hurt or anything like that because not enough of them would get through and there's always a lot of um, security around. So we, we do enjoy that, you know, it's good fun. Um, opening in our, in our country today is the uh, opening <coughs> of the Democratic National Convention. I asked Paul this question a few minutes ago. There's a, there's a big uh, dispute in our country today about the aspect of entertainer being involved in the political spectrum of his country. Uh, say you, uh, the Beatles, were American and not English. Mm. Would you have the opinion that you should be involved in politics or not? Well, only if we wanted to be, but I think we'd still be exactly the same as we are with British politics. You know, we just try and steer clear of it. I know all of us are old enough to vote, but we don't. I know I don't because I just don't understand enough about it, so I'm not going to vote just for the sake of putting a little slip into a box. I'll wait until I know what's happening before I do vote, and I think we'd be, we'd be the same, you know, even if we were American. What about Mr. Goldwater? What's your personal views on him? Okay. Well, I've only seen him, uh, you know, they showed us the TV show from Cow Palace. I saw a little bit of that, and he was shouting around, saying about how they should blow up, go and get him, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't exactly agree. I thought he was Goldfinger. Goldfinger? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll just get, I'll vote for James Bond. Don't push the button, eh? Yeah. <coughs> I'm enjoying it so far, so, yeah. you know, let's have a bit of a laugh. George, you've been around the world. You've seen just about all the, the big cities and the big places that people would like to go on holiday. Where would you like to go back to for your holiday next year? Um, I don't really know. I like, I like most places in America I've been to. But I think for any holiday, I'd always like to go to somewhere hot. So I think that'd be either Florida or California or somewhere. But I've been to Hawaii too, and I think that's great. But there's no one particular place that, you know, I can put before any other place. No, I'd, in fact, for most holidays, I think I'd choose a different place each time just for the sake of seeing something new, even if I did like the place I'd been to previously. You like cornflakes too. Yeah, but not as much as it's publicized. <laughs> Georgia, to climax conversation, uh, what out of all the uh, records that you've put out is your favorite? Um, Besides the current one. Well, which is the current one? In America, they have about eight current ones at a yeah. time. Uh, Hard Day's Night, I understand from our last talk. I like, um, I like I'll Cry Instead. And... Um, if I fell, I think, out of the newer ones, out of the older ones, I think, um, the other side of Can't Buy Me Love, you can't do that. I like that one. Uh, many of the groups in England you know personally, and you work with oil in what you call the early days. Do you find any uh, particular resentment because of your success? Um, not. No, I don't think so. Not well, definitely not to our faces, you know. 
everyone's very friendly. What they say behind our backs, I don't know. But we've never heard anything. So I think, you know, everyone's still pretty friendly. And at these press conferences here, um, you know, you mentioned being asked the questions over and over again. How many rings do you wear and everything? Um, is there anything in the world right now that you would like to express your opinion about? Not to me, but is there anything that you wish you'd be asked? No. No. Not at all. Nothing I, you know, I can think of that I can sort of... I ask this to, uh, to Paul and uh, John. Uh, you are a world figure, there's no doubt about it. In fact, somebody wants you to run for president in this country, as you've been asked before. It's a bit of a joke, actually. <laughs> uh, is there any way as a young man that uh, you would go up about, if you could, to uh, stop war? What would be your method or theory? There's some, you know, yeah, people, you I can. I just think it's unfair that you get a leader of each country, say, and then they force so many people to go fight in each other, you know, and they don't get touched hardly. It's all the, you know, sort of the young men of the world get shot and bombed and pulled to bits, you know, which is unfair. They should stick them all in a... I know it sounds silly, but they should stick them all in a boxing ring and let them fight it out or shoot it out themselves instead of fetching all those innocent bystanders in. You know, we're both in what they call the war baby generation yeah. and all that business, and everybody's criticizing current society. I think they've been doing it for years. Uh, what do you think of the criticism based upon our society, our young society, let's say? The criticism such as what? Well, I mean, like, uh, I'm about your age and everything, and there's always this business, oh, this is, these kids are bad. Oh, well, it's, that's gone on for years, because, you know, people are saying, um, we never did that, and we, you know, we never had the chances you had, but I was talking to my mother one day, and she said, well, you know, her mother used to say that to her, you know, and she's got over it now. I mean, even she used to say it to me, you know, like, if I had the chances you had and all that, you know, when I was young, but... I think that's gone on all the way through life, you know, as far as anyone can remember. The parents have always said, I didn't have that like you have, or, you know, so I just forget that. I just hope I don't end up like that when I'm old with a few kids saying, oh, I didn't have it as easy as you and all that, you know. Yeah, well, this, this happens all the time. But, but I just forget about that now, you know, I'm over that bit. Do you ever daydream? I know all of us... Uh, you know, there are a million people who'd like to be in your position, but do you ever daydream that you want to be something else? Um, you know, like we all, yeah. like I used to, when I was uh, younger, uh, let's say in junior high school, I used to want to be a big football star, you know, and think I, about it. I've never sort of wished anything like that, you know, like most kids wish to be an engine driver, which is, a, I don't know if it's big over here, but it's a big thing in England, you know, all the kids want to be train drivers. I never had any of that, you know, I just keep going, I've always kept going, just rolling along. And uh, how do you like uh, this current tour as far as the press is concerned, with you and without you, the local press and the people traveling with you? How do I think it's going? Yeah, I mean, are you satisfied? Uh, you know, everyone's doing a good job. You know, I don't think anyone's really um, been too nasty, you know, up to now. Too nasty? Too nasty. I didn't like that. <laughs> No, they're all okay, you know. I mean, they come in the conferences. Like the woman today said, uh, do you like putting the press on? We're not putting them on, really. It's just that the, the majority expect us to sort of put them down, you know. That's what I've learned. I think if a person uh, did not see you or know you before a press conference, that they might get that impression simply because you guys are so uh, relaxed yeah. and so frank. Well, I think that's what it is, you know, because the, the, uh, I know in England they're used to people sort of saying... Um, I'm so happy to be here, and it's very nice of you, and all that. Well, you know, I don't think we we say that. I mean, it's nice to be in different cities, but we don't put it on as much as we call them showbiz people, which we're not. You know, you know what showbiz people are. Yeah, the stars. Well, you know, but the when I say stars, I mean with quotes around them. Yeah, know. you know, them people. Who, who, the manager tells them what to say, and that you know, which ours doesn't. We say what we want for ourselves. You know. An amazing contrast was that garden party we had in Hollywood. Where, uh, this is just my personal opinion. We saw many of the stars, and many of them are nice people, but this this status uh, thing where everybody's trying to outdo each other. Yeah, and and here were the stars, and there were the Beatles, and it was just the biggest act in the world. Yeah. And and it was a new generation of talent. It was uh, a naturalness. You know. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, that's Hollywood, I suppose. That's what, you know, we believe in Hollywood, that it's all, well, mostly fake, actually. That's what we think of it. 
you know, we, we don't know too much about it, being English and not living there. That's why I liked your picture when I saw it in Atlantic City for the second time. I liked it because I saw on the screen what I've been seeing for several weeks. Yeah. Well, we tried to get as near to what we are as we could. You know, a bit, I mean, some of it was bits we don't do in real life, really, you know, acting and that. We just tried to make it as real as we possibly could. And um, pieces in it were just part of our lives, you know, which we've had. The bit on the train really happened to us when the man came in and closed the window and put the radio off. And we told Alan, you know, the fellow who wrote the script, and um, he put it in, you know, but that was true. Ringo, thanks a lot for talking to us. It's been a pleasure. Okay, thank you, Larry. How's your wife? She's fine. <laughs> Give her my love. I will. Paul McCartney. Paul, uh, we just heard the announcement that in Chicago, where a uh, welcome for you was planned officially and then rescinded by the city because they said they could not control crowds, uh, there will be uh, no official welcome, let's say. In other words, uh, what, how do you feel about this? Would you like to go out and meet uh, the various fans at airports throughout America? Yeah, of course. You know, I mean, like today in Milwaukee, um, we we were told that there were fans at the airport, so it, naturally we said, well, you know, at least let's drive past them. But the police chief said to the people in our, our party uh, that, that we definitely couldn't do that. And apparently there were only about 500 people. I mean, you know, and that's not really a lot for the police to handle, 500 people. And especially when they're not... I mean, it's not as though they're a mob trying to kill each other or anything. They're not trying to kill us. They're only trying to sort of see us or something. And it's the same with us. We're only trying to sort of see them and say hello to them, you know. So we're protected to a sort of a ridiculous extent on this sort of thing. Um, and so, you know, obviously today when we wanted to go and see him, it was a bit off, I think, that the police said, well, no, we're going we're gonna to take you out of the airport by a back route. And we must have seen about three people, you know, at the back route. <laughs> you know, Did you a, protest, Paul? Yeah, you know, we said, can you sort of take us round by the front where everybody is? But they, I mean, we can't do anything, you know, they just say no, and they're the police, and we're not. We say, you know, please, they say no, and that's it. Paul, uh, one of the most irritating things I think, I guess to you, maybe you can confirm this, is the fact that many of these youngsters and fans, young and old, have been waiting for hours, some of them since the early morning hours. What do you feel about this? Yeah, well, again, you know, that's a great big drag, because... Um, if they, you know, if they're going to sort of be good enough to go out there and wait for a long time, and even the ones who don't even wait for a long time, I mean, I mean at least they're there at the airport to give us a welcome. And if we're not allowed to go around and, and it, you know, just even see them, well, it puts us on the spot, you know, and we just feel like heels for not being able to see them. Paul, what do you plan to do in Chicago now that you can't meet the fans? Well, you know, I mean, we'll try and do a bit more than we normally do in cities uh, because of this, you know. Actually, if we can do something uh, through telly, uh, the television, or through the radio, you know, and sort of explain to everybody that it wasn't really our fault. I mean, of course, you know, we'll try and see as many fans as we can. But if we can get on television or radio and explain and, you know, sort of talk to newspapers about it and say that it was a pity, but it wasn't really our fault that we weren't allowed to see them, you know. Uh, well, one other thing, uh, how is John's throat and George's and you started this whole thing? Yeah, well, the throat, actually, they're not too bad, you know. I think John's got about the worst throat. Um, I, I think they'll be cleared up in a couple of days anyway, you know. I think we'll be okay for tonight and tomorrow night. Just be a little bit croaky, you know. What did the doctor say today at Milwaukee? Um, he said, hello, boys. And we said, hi, Doc. Uh, no, he just said, you know, your throats have been a bit run down. Because, it, of course, you know, when you're doing a, a hectic tour like we've been on, you know, we've been all over the place the last two weeks, uh, you get a bit run down, you know. No it's else. nothing really serious. It's just that your throat gets a bit sore after singing every night, you know, talking all day. Well, that outside yeah. the performance probably didn't help any. Mm, probably, yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, you've got to sing a bit loud if, if the mics aren't very good at some places. Anyway, uh, I think it was just that our throats got a bit sore, a little bit run down, but uh, he's given us all sorts of things now, so we're okay, you know. Paul, thank you very much, and we promise you that uh, these comments will get across to the Chicago listeners and all, all around. Great, thanks, Larry. Thanks, Art. Thank you, Art. Thank you, Paul.